Some of the hardest things to do in biochemistry is just to keep the names of all the pathways and all the substrates in those pathways in order. So what I'm going to do really quick is give you a way to really quickly and easily memorize all of the steps in glycolysis, all of the steps in the TCA cycle, and all of the steps in the urea cycle. What we're going to start with is the charging step. So if we were to take the... Um, the, T or the uh, gly glycolytic cycle, we can break it down into charging and then splitting. So what we first do is we add phosphate groups to glucose twice and then it splits. This is called the charging steps. And you can see in those charging steps that first you have glucose, then glucose 6-phosphate, then fructose 6-phosphate, then fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Uh, and so what I want to do really quick is you can really easily remember this just by saying give and get, forgive and forget. And so that's how you remember all the charging steps. Give and get, forgive and forget. So it stands for glucose, glucose 6-phosphate, fructose 6-phosphate, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Next part's a little bit more difficult, and what I want to start with is to say that we are going to um, start with glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So we're saying that we already have the fructose 1,6-bisphosphate from the charging steps, and whenever it breaks down, it splits into two molecules. One of those is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. The other one becomes dihydroxyacetone phosphate, which gets converted into a second molecule of G3P. So you just heard me say G3P, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate is often labeled G3P. And then the next molecule, 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, is often labeled 1,3-BPG-bisphosphoglycerate. Uh, the other label that's often uh, used is uh, phosphenylpyruvate is usually labeled PEP, P-E-P. And then in the middle here, this 3-phosphoglycerate and 2-phosphoglycerate, often labeled 3-PG and 2-PG. So this is not quite so easy. Um, first of all, I want to tell you that I'm using a cartoon that my daughter watches as a memory device. And so we'll start with G3P. This is grow three pigs, one to three big pigs. So big B, PG is pig. Three pigs, two pigs. Peppa pig. So that's grow three pigs, one to three big pigs, three pigs, two pigs, Peppa pig. And so grow three pigs is, uh, is glyceraldehyde three phosphate. One to three big pigs is one three bisphosphoglycerate. Three pigs is three phosphoglycerate, two phosphoglycerate, and then PEP is phosphenylpyruvate and pyruvate. This will actually be an even better memory device if you actually visualize growing up three pigs and imagining that you would be satisfied with one, two, or three pigs as long as they were big pigs, and then imagining, okay, if I had three, I'm fine. If I had two, I'm fine, but I'd really be okay with just one as long as it was Peppa Pig. And in case you're wondering, Peppa Pig is the cartoon. My daughter watches it. I am not going to admit to having actually watched a full episode, but I maybe I have. Maybe that's why I've used this memory device. We know once we get pyruvate, pyruvate turns into acetyl-CoA. Then acetyl-CoA combines with oxaloacetate to form citrate. Citrate goes to isocitrate. Isocitrate to alpha-ketoglutarate to succinyl-CoA to succinate to fumarate to malate, and then back reforming oxaloacetate. And so the way that we can remember this is if we just start with citrate. Can, we're going to skip this because iconotase catalyzes two steps uh, forming citrate into isocitrate. So can I keep selling sex for money, officer? That nails down the citric acid cycle. Uh, I'll just as a way of um, being upfront, this mnemonic as well as the next one both come from first aid. The previous two were completely from me. Obviously, the first aid mnemonics are way better. I want you to notice so, can, this is citrate, I is isocitrate, K is alpha ketoglutarate, S is succinyl CoA, succinate, fumarate. 
malate oxaloacetate. If we can just remember that, we can remember all the steps. And so one other thing I want to point out is that if we, we can get fumarate from this succinate here, we can also get it as a byproduct from the urea cycle. So the urea cycle feeds in and provides more fumarate, and so we can also memorize the urea cycle. Now just as a way to orient you, in case you are not familiar with the urea cycle yet, the urea cycle, part of it takes place in the cytoplasm, part of it takes place inside the mitochondria. So ornithine moves into the mitochondria, it combines with carbamyl phosphate to form citrulline. All of those steps take place in the mitochondria, then the citrulline moves back out. And actually the, the transporter that ornithine moves in and the transporter that citrulline moves out is the same thing. So what actually happens is you get bicarbonate, which we're calling CO2. CO2, or bicarb, combines with ATP and NH4. The NH4 comes from glutamine. And those are catalyzed by carbamyl phosphate synthase 1, CPS1. There's a CPS2 that's in the cytoplasm. It's for a different thing. It's actually for making nucleotides. But uh, the CPS1 is for the urea cycle. There's actually one thing in this image that is not depicted that I want to go ahead and draw in, and that is that aspartate, aspartate actually in this step right here combines with citrulline to form arginyl succinate. So if we start with ornithine, we get ordinarily careless crappers are also frivolous about urination. And just as I've written, ordinarily careless crappers are also frivolous about urination. So we have ornithine, carbamyl phosphate, citrulline, aspartate, arginyl succinate, fumarate, arginine urea. And remember, this fumarate that gets kicked off here, it goes back into the TCA cycle.